Hey guys, I'm going to show you how I go about drawing a perfectly proportionate cube in two point perspective. This is actually one of the most important things to master in a perspective drawing because if you can get this right, then it means that you can actually move on to more complicated subjects while avoiding those typical perspective issues such as you know, warped proportions and uh, distortion in the drawing. So stick around as I show you how I do it. Okay, so before jumping straight into the lesson, I thought I would show you guys uh, just a few samples of some of the boxes that I've drawn. And you can see like I've just kind of filled a page of uh, cubes in different positions. You know, some of them were looking from below, some of them were looking from above. And uh, they're in quite a different variety of uh, different rotations. Now, this is basically the method that we're following. We're drawing a cube based on the ellipse, okay? And there's a reason we do that. First of all, it simplifies the process of drawing a box because the only other way you can draw a perfect cube in perspective is to basically, you know, draw a horizon line, station point, cone of vision, auxiliary points, measuring points, and then the vanishing points that travel from the station point. Um, if you're in, if you're unfamiliar with any of those concepts, Scott Robertson has a book on it called How to Draw, and there's also another book called The Complete Guide to Drawing in Perspective by Craig Atterbury. Now, I actually don't use station points or any of that other stuff because it's not particularly useful. It's, and it's especially not helpful when you're trying to compose an image. You know, remember that a good artwork should be all about the composition. Yeah, the technical stuff does matter, but the technical stuff is subordinate to the overall composition. If you haven't got a good composition, you haven't got a good drawing, it doesn't matter how much of a technical wizard you are, okay? Um, if you're more technically minded, you might be better off, you know, being an, uh, like an engineering draftsman or something like that. But, you know, my channel is all about art, right? It's all about composing beautiful images and it, and it basically starts here so I use the ellipse why do I do that well simply put the ellipse is a circle in perspective now that's actually not technically true um, circles in perspective are actually ovals okay they're not perfectly equal like an ellipse is however when we look at a circle in perspective you know, I could even like use this can right here, right? Like I could sort of tilt that so you can kind of see how the circle of the lid changes into an ellipse and it widens and narrows, right? Um, but going back to my point, circles are ovals in perspective. However, when the human eye looks at a circle in perspective, it interprets it, interprets it as an ellipse it looks perfectly elliptical even though technically we know it isn't but for the purposes of this demonstration we use an ellipse because it looks better and we can get better perspective drawings from it remember that everything we do in perspective is an illusion Okay, uh, there was uh, in the last video that I posted, there was a few comments um, about, you know, the way I teach perspective isn't technically accurate uh, because I don't use station points and measuring points and all that stuff. Uh, well, as I said, I've already explained why I don't use it. 
because I just find them awfully limiting. Uh, but the truth is, is that there is not really a technically accurate way of doing anything in perspective. It's all an illusion. You're drawing what appears to be a three-dimensional space on a flat surface. So if you're trying to somehow engineer your way to a perfect perspective image that takes into account all of the subtleties of how the human eye perceives the real world, you're already fighting a losing battle, okay? You, your time is gonna be much better spent on designing the perspective, on designing the image to get a really cool looking image rather than something that looks real because the truth is, unfortunately, you can't engineer something that's going to look completely natural. But this method comes close. So I've got some pretty natural looking cubes in perspective and you'll notice I've just drawn them on the page, okay? There's no horizon line. There's no vanishing line or vanishing point, sorry. There's no station point. There's no cone of vision. I hate the cone of vision, by the way. It's extremely li limiting. Um, it's good to know it, but I'm not a slave to it, okay? So maybe do a bit of reading on the cone of vision and what it is, but don't be a slave to it. But, you know, going back to my point, there, there's none of that fluff on here. It's just ellipses with boxes drawn around them. And it works. It looks good. They look like cubes and they look believable. And that's why this method is really good. It's still technically accurate. Um, but more importantly, it, it actually looks a lot better. And because you're doing away with the horizon, you can incorporate the horizon line, by the way. Um, it's just that a lot of the time I choose not to in my own perspective drawings. But this way of drawing really frees you up and it allows you to focus on things that are a little bit more important like composition rather than bogging ourselves down with all the technical stuff. This one kind of looks a little bit on the rec on the rectangular side, it looks like it's drawn a little bit too wide. Um, but the rest of them look okay. But this is the downside of this method, okay? It's, it's quite tricky to master because basically, as you can see, you're drawing straight lines that interact with the tangencies of the ellipse. And that line has to be angled you have to spend a bit of time trying to get those angles to travel in a way that looks convincing. And that's the hardest part. If you go too angular, it's going to look very skinny and distorted. Um, if it's not angled enough, it's going to look more like an isometric drawing. So that's basically the only downside with this method is getting those straight lines to roll off the tangencies of the ellipse in a correct way. But there's a few tricks that you can use to minimize that. And again, practice makes perfect. To master it, and when you can master the basic forms, you can actually begin to construct more complicated shapes like human anatomy. I'm just doing this from my head. I'm not looking at photographs. I'm basically using the front view and the side view and then using a few descriptive geometry techniques. I'm just kind of combining them into a three dimensional view. This is how architects draw. This is how industrial designers draw. You know, it's a, it's quite a technical process, but before you can do this, you must be able to master this.
That took me a lot longer than I thought to find a spare page. <laughs> okay, so. That was a nice little flip through the sketchbook. Just gonna clean this up a little. Okay, so the moment you've been waiting for. How do we draw a perfect cube in two point perspective? Well, let's actually come back to the ellipse and sort of discuss the theory of it. So, if I have a circle, and I'm just going to do some very crude, crude sketches, by the way, so um, I'm not going to spend too much time on explaining this because I really just want to get into the real meat of the lesson as I'm sure you do as well. So I'm going to draw a uh, circle. So we're basically looking at this from a bird's eye view. And I'm just going to freehand this because, again, I don't need to spend all day trying to draw the perfect circle even though I could just use a compass but I don't know I'm a bit of a masochist when I draw so okay Now, we've got a circle, let's go ahead and inscribe a square around it, okay? So, I'm actually going to draw two axes that cross through the center of the circle and hit the tangent. And I'm going to use these axes to sort of pinpoint the exact location as to where the square should be touching the edges of that circle. Okay, so I've got a point here. So this line is parallel to this line. Remember that we're looking at this square from a bird's eye view. That hits tangent there. This one goes that direction. And this one over here. Okay, so there's my square that we're looking at from above. Now, those of you who are already familiar with perspective drawing, you'll know exactly what vanishing points are. Can't really do a perspective drawing without them, to be honest. So, we know that these lines are traveling to a vanishing point on the horizon line somewhere. So this is, we're gonna label that VP1. These lines are traveling to VP1. These lines are traveling to VP2, okay? They're traveling to a completely different vanishing point. And there's only two vanishing points for a square, okay? Because there's only two angles. There's an angle that goes this way, and then there's an angle that goes perpendicular to it. That's what makes a square. A square is also equal on all sides, so that also makes a square. So we know what makes a square. Two vanishing points and a perfect circle must be able to sit inside the square and touch all the tangents. Right, well, 
if we know that, then we can use that knowledge to be able to draw in perspective. So let me just draw a horizontal axis that cuts through the circle. And let me place, I'm gonna drag the center of this circle down to here. And that same horizontal axis is traveling this way. I'm going to measure from the center to one side of the circle and transport that down here and same on the other side. And just use your finger and your pencil to measure the proportions, make sure they're equal on all sides. So, we've got that part of the circle done. Let's go ahead and turn it into ellipse by flattening it. So I'm going to decide on a height. And again, place your marks and then measure using your pencil. You can sketch the edges in like so. Now, if you're having trouble drawing good ellipses, I'm going to show you another trick in the next example. Um, it's a trick that I don't really use anymore because I feel pretty confident sketching freehand ellipses, but for those of you who are struggling, I'm going to show you what to do, but I'll do that in the next example. Right now, I'm just going to finish my little square drawing. All right. Okay, so there we go. Now, what I'm gonna do, we can see that this tangent kind of rests on that point of the circle, right? So I'm gonna just drag that down. I'm just gonna place that here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line from that point that crosses through the center of the ellipse that we've just drawn. And that will provide me with the other tangent that rests on the other side of that circle there. Okay. Pay attention to the angle of that tangent. And this is the tricky part. So if I was to flatten this part of the ellipse, I think that angle would be traveling something like this. You can use a ruler if you want to. And if I was to flatten this part of the curve, that angle might travel in a direction a little bit like that. And the more you practice this method, the better you get at doing this. Now I'm going to draw an angle that is traveling between these two angles and I'm drawing it from the center of the circle. So that's this angle here. So I've got a tangent here, tangent here.
Okay, so there we go. That's how you can draw a square in perspective without a horizon line and without vanishing points. It's that simple. And I think you will want to switch over to this method of drawing because it frees you up to explore other perspective techniques. And it's also a much better method for actually drawing complex forms in any angle you want. So let's actually just quickly draw a line that travels from corner to corner, just to understand the geometry a little bit better. I'm just trying to draw this line as straight as I can. Now, the center of the ellipse is there. The center of the square is just off it. Now, most of you would think that the center of the square needs to be perfectly aligned with the center of the ellipse, but that's actually not true. That's incorrect because the, the ellipse is not drawn in perspective, okay? Remember, ovals are in perspective. We're simply using the ellipse as a geometric tool to construct the perspective that we want, okay? The ellipse gives context to the rotation and perspective of the square. I hope you're following this. <laughs> the center of the square is a little bit further back. And the reason for that is because the square is in perspective, okay? So, this part of the square here, the cross section, would sit just behind the cross section of the ellipse. And it's really important that you understand that, that those two are not, they don't share the same center. Because if you draw that, if you try to force that to make the square have the exact same center as the ellipse, you are going to run into quite a few different perspective issues um, where it gets a little bit unpredictable. So draw your lines from corner to corner as straight as you can if you're using a ruler, then that's fine. You should have no problem. And pay attention to what these angles are telling you, okay? Don't ignore them. Don't just go with this. Um, there are certain types of perspectives. It, it depends on what angle you draw the square where these two dots are a little bit further apart, okay? So they don't share the same center. It's very important that you understand that. Okay, well, we've drawn a square in perspective and it looks pretty good, you know? It looks believable. It, uh, yeah, it, it looks like a square in perspective. If we can do that, then we can draw a cube in perspective. That's, that should be perfectly proportionate. Well, we know that a cube looks like a square from all sides, right? Well, I'll tell you what to do. So what we're gonna do If a cube looks like a square on all sides, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a square. So I'm not starting with the ellipse. I'm just starting with a square. take that measurement and my head might get in the way here but I just need to make sure that measurements correct so apologies and I'm gonna place that over here I'm just gonna double check that 
and that looks good. You could use a set square to do this as well. I love freehand drawing though. I love the feeling of freehand drawing. Um, I think it's really good practice. I need to learn how to draw freehand if I'm going to be drawing human anatomy and sculptures and even architecture sometimes. So it's a skill that I'm always trying to hone. But if you want to use rulers to do this, be my guest. Uh, we know how to find the center of a square because we do that. That was a little bit off, so I'm just going to correct that slightly. And it looks a little bit low. So I'm just going to measure on all sides. That looks okay. But that is a little bit low. So I'm just going to place a mark there. I'm going to place a mark there. So you'll notice that I'm not a slave to my lines. If I see a mistake, I am going to shift it. But we can safely assume that that's the center of the square. Okay. Now, let's discuss these lines, the top line and the bottom line. These are going to serve as the horizontal axes of the ellipses that we're going to draw. So what we're drawing is essentially a square cylinder. I'm going to start with the bottom one. I'm going to decide on a height of the ellipse. Now, I don't make my ellipses too wide. I keep them a little bit on the narrower side. If your ellipse is looking closer to a circle, um, then this method won't work, okay? You want to keep that kind of flattened. Um, don't think that was quite equal. Let's come up there. Okay, there we go. Just gonna carefully draw in some curves. Oh yeah, okay, so that ellipse method that I was telling you about, how you can draw really neat ellipses. Here's what you're gonna do. There's a couple of methods. There's one that's very technically accurate. That's probably best used on bigger drawings. But on a drawing this size, I'm going to show you one method which should actually serve you quite well in most of your drawings. So I'm going to start with this corner and I'm just going to close this side of the ellipse because this is the corner that I'm most familiar with. Or this is the one that I'm pretty good at drawing, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place a vertical line anywhere on that ellipse, typically around this region where it curves. And then you're going to measure that with your pencil and you're going to duplicate that on the bottom side, like that. And you will find that point. So you're basically drawing a mirror image. Um, there was another ellipse method that actually really blew my mind. It was like using a separate bit of paper to construct the perfect, perfectly proportional ellipse. I might do that in another video, but not in this one because this video is already going on for long enough. 
You can actually do the same thing on the other side. So you can take this measurement, where that vertical line is from the edge, place it on the other side, take that height, place it there, so that one's looking good, there. And you can put as many of these vertical lines as you feel is necessary. So you don't just have to use one or two, you can, you can put five or six. Um, I usually don't use too many. I find, I find they actually turn out better the less <laughs> auxiliary lines I use, but for some of you that need a little bit of help, you can use that technique. Okay, so we've got that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another ellipse above it. This one's going to be slightly narrower. So I'm going to put it about there. It's not going to be too much narrower because I want the perspective to be more naturalistic. If I draw a very narrow ellipse at the top, the perspective will appear to be more extreme and maybe slightly distorted. Although typically you can avoid a lot of distortion by using this method. Okay. This drawing is uh, taking a lot longer than I thought. It's been a while since I've used this method, honestly. I'm just gonna sketch that ellipse in. Um, but it's no problem taking your time in the early stages of this. If you get these ellipses looking good and equal on all sides of the axes, then, um, you, you will get a better result. So probably not something that you want to rush through. Now, let's decide what angle we want to draw it. Let's say I'm just going to start by drawing an angle that travels somewhere like that. So it's traveling in this direction. And you can see that it hits the ellipse right about there. So I'm going to take that point, draw it through the center of the ellipse, through to the other side. And you can see that this angle, when I flatten that part of the curve, It's almost parallel to this one. In fact, you might think it is parallel, but it isn't. This is slightly flatter than this angle. And typically, that's how you're going to want to do this. Because the moment you start drawing the angles up here, they're gonna look even flatter. And it kind of looks like you're drawing an isometric drawing, but truthfully, you're not. So now what I do is I draw an angle that is traveling equally between these two lines. So you can see the space here. The spaces are more or less equal and same here. But you can really see the effect here, how this space is, uh, are a little bit smaller. 
that locates the tangents on those perpendicular angles. So I'm just going to carefully sketch these in very gently just to ensure that they are correct. So draw lightly. Flatten that part. I'm just going to switch pencils quickly because that one's a little bit fuzzy. Okay, so there we go. So you see these tangencies here? With a vertical line, we're going to transport them up to the upper ellipse. Make sure that line is vertical. If it's slanted, even by a millimeter, it can really uh, ruin your drawing. Have a look at those angles. And then just drawing vertical lines from each corner. And there we go. So have a look at your upper ellipse and just make sure that these lines are touching all four of those tangent points. And make sure that when you draw a vertical line from the bottom square to the upper square, that the lines are perfectly vertical.
if it meets all of that criteria, then basically you've done a good job. And this cube may have looked a little bit better had I used a ruler. It may have looked a little bit better had I used the uh, method of, of the uh, drawing an ellipse in a very technically accurate way. I can do that in another video if you guys really want to learn that one. I don't really use it much, but it is cool to know. But the fact of the matter is, you know, if you step back and have a look at this cube, it does look pretty good. It doesn't look like a rectangular prism, which is good, <laughs> that's the main part, because that's the part that I think a lot of artists struggle with, right? They draw a box thinking it's a cube and then they look at it and they go, actually it looks more like a rectangular prism. So, we haven't got that issue. So this is a reliable way of drawing a cube. That took way longer than I thought it would though. Usually it's a bit faster than that, but it's been a while since I've drawn this stuff, so a little bit rusty. But why is it important to learn this? Well, this kind of opens up the world of perspective to you a little bit more. And if you can master this, then you can start drawing things like columns, uh, you know, ornamental decorations, you know, architectural decorations and things like that. You'll be able to draw them with a little bit more accuracy and you won't have to uh, struggle too much with proportion because you're already using a method that is getting the proportions in there early. A lot of that work is done through that initial square that we drew to begin with. And the other benefit to this method is that you can really fill the page. Uh, going back to the station points and the measuring points, um, I just found it super limiting because even though it was technically accurate, you had to plot the cone of vision, the station point, the horizon line, all on the same page. And then your drawing would end up tiny. With this method, you can really fill the page. You can draw it like any scale that you want. That's far more important when it comes to composition. I'm going to do another video on this method where I show you how you can actually reverse engineer this method a little bit, which is even better for composition purposes. But for now, what I want you to do is to practice that. Um, and if you do it enough times, you'll speed up. Don't worry too much about speed. Uh, speed is a byproduct of mastery. So just focus on getting it to look good, getting it to look right. Get those curves looking really nice because the nicer those ellipses are, the, the better the drawing's gonna turn out, essentially. Um, anyway. I hope you enjoyed that one and uh, yeah, give it a crack. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's helpful to you. Uh, let me know in the comments how you went with it. Um, did you like the method? Did you not like it? Uh, are there any things in particular that you would like to see? Uh, in the next video, I'm going to be teaching you how to reverse engineer this method. 
uh, which is a little bit better for composition purposes. And in a video after that, I'll teach you that ellipse method, how you can get like perfectly proportionate ellipses. Uh, I don't really use that one myself, but I know that for some of you, it's going to be very helpful. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna start recording the next video pretty soon. And hopefully I can get that content out to you pretty soon. It's been pretty tricky trying to find the time to do these YouTube videos. So for those of you who are subscribed to me and you're wondering uh, why I don't get them out on a more regular basis, uh, it's right now it's just not really a possibility. I, um, I actually operate my own hair studio in the city, which is a full-time business in itself, um, you know, managing clients client appointments and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, you know, YouTube isn't really a full-time gig for me, but you know, this year I am gonna try and focus on it a little bit more. Uh, I've got some ideas for future videos, which is good. So it means I can start acting on that. But in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll get the next one out to you guys pretty soon. So. Stay tuned for that one. And as always, um, share this video around. If you know anyone who likes this style of drawing or just anyone in general who might be interested in this stuff, uh, just share the video around. Um, make sure you, you know, leave a like, leave a comment, um, subscribe if you're interested in seeing any of my future content. And I will get the next video out to you guys pretty soon. So, peace.